All right, I want to talk about a few more things to do with glycogen synthesis and glycogen breakdown. And um, what I have here is um, a couple of kind of unique, I guess you could call them an, an enzyme, proteins, they're protein, both of them are proteins, um, that play an important and vital role in the breakdown and synthesis of glycogen. So what I, want, what I have here is a question. I already did the question. I already prepared my answers. It's just easier that way than having me write these all out. And it says, briefly describe the role of each of the following in glycogen metabolism and why they are necessary. So the first one is glycogen debranching enzyme. Now, just from the name alone, you should kind of see what that, what that you know, what, where this is going. Um, if you recall previously, I said that glycogen is highly branched, okay? There's a lot of branches. And the reason there's a lot of branches is because unlike other molecules, um, it the branches allow for a lot of different starting points for the breakdown and the goal of breaking down glycogen is that is to release glucose into the blood as rapidly as possible so the branching helps release glucose into the blood as as rapidly as possible now what the debranching enzyme does is the enzyme removes the branches in glycogen now you may wonder why that's important and, that, and that's important because glycogen phosphorylase reaches a critical point okay as it's breaking down the glycogen molecule when there's four glucose units remaining on a branch okay so here's glycogen phosphorylase it's breaking down you know um, glycogen releasing glucose into the blood and it reaches this critical point where there's only four glucose units remaining on the branch okay and the enzyme is needed because glycogen phosphorylase can't remove those final four glucose monomers okay um, and it can't remove them closer than four units to a branch and so what it does is it goes through a process essentially of transferring those four glucose molecules to another branch okay and allows the also allows the alpha 1,6 what's known as an alpha 1,6 linkage to be um, to be removed as well. So it plays kind of a dual role there. Essentially what it does is it removes a branch. So when we get to that critical value and we need to remove the branch, it's done using this what's known as glycogen debranching enzyme. Okay, And if it were not available then glycogen breakdown would stop. And that would be terrible if we really needed glucose. So if we were exercising or doing something, uh, with, you know, where we needed a lot of energy, this would this would really be detrimental. And the second one I have here is is a protein. It's known as glycogenin. Okay, and this protein's a primer, and it's very similar to the DNA primers you might use in like a polymerase chain reaction. I mean, not the same in chemically or anything like that, but the same principle. Okay, the principle is that glycogen synthase, which is the enzyme that synthesizes a glycogen molecule, um, cannot add, you know, two independent glucose monomers together. Okay, it has to add from a pre-existing branch. Okay, it already has to have a pre-existing um, molecule essentially to add to. So it just can't form something out of, you, you just couldn't, you couldn't put, let me put it to you this way. You could not put glycogen synthase in a vial and add glucose monomers and have it synthesize a glycogen, uh, a, you know, a full glycogen molecule. All right, you have to have this primer, and this primer is a protein. It's called glycogenin, and essentially that is what it does. It starts glycogen synthase, uh, starts glycogen synthesis. Excuse me, and um, it's important. So there's a couple more interesting facts.